We're at Cooper Gap, about 12 miles north of Springer Mountain. We're gonna be shuttled by Brett Eady because we decided that we didn't wanna try shuttling ourselves with the van on these dirt roads. We were worried that these roads could get icy or soft, but they actually look quite good. We're gonna start the AT in Georgia shortly. Okay, here we are at the Springer Mountain parking lot. January 14th, 2018. Nine degrees. This is our shuttle driver, Brett Eady. He is an awesome guy. He hiked the trail southbound last year. Use him for shuttles. Yes, and pretty soon we're going to be off. Going that direction, up to Springer. It was a little bit icy. More ice. I'm going to put the camera down. Okay, here we are at the southern terminus of the Appalachian Trail. Beautiful day. Beautiful view. Show them where the log box is kept. Right in here. Yeah, that's cool. It's absolutely spectacular here. This is it. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. That looks pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Look at Appalachian Trail. How do you like this trail? This is awesome. It is so pretty. And right now we're out of the little snow pockets into the rhododendrons. So we came upon a kid today and he was hiking from the Springer parking lot up to Springer Mountain and he was stopped on the side. He pulled out a camel cigarette, kind of appropriate. The old saying, I'd walk a mile for a camel. Well, he had walked almost <laughs> a <laughs> Not half quite. a mile, <laughs> almost half a a mile a for a camel. This was his first day and he's going to hike the whole trail. And he was wearing dungarees, brand new boots, and a cotton t-shirt. Cotton t-shirt, cotton sweatshirt. He had a huge, huge, huge pack. And when we came upon him, he was taking off his outer jacket and he was trying to reorganize, reorganize his, pack. his pack to fit it in because he has so much stuff in his pack. Yeah. And I guess he was gonna strap it to the outside. He thinks he's gonna so, do 15 miles today, yeah. which is farther than we are. And um, I hope he does. Yeah, I hope he does too. Well, I hope he makes it. I, I think he's gonna have to pare down his weight a little bit. He also said he wasn't in any kind of shape at all. He didn't have any maps and he didn't even know that you're supposed to follow white blazes. He wanted to know where the first outfitters were. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he wanted to buy a map. Yeah. Anyway, this trail is amazing. It's just smooth and easy going. This is the Three Forks River. Is it the river? No, or just Three Forks three. parking lot? No, it's where three rivers come in. Okay, three rivers come into one place. <laughs> These dirt roads look awesome. I know. They might be really fun to mountain bike. We're going to Hightower and beyond, but we were told by Brett to go to Long Creek Falls. So we're gonna do that. It's actually a really long fall. Yeah. So as you keep hiking, you'll see it. At, okay. It looks like a long, you know, all this yeah. rock face yeah. is like black yeah. rock. It yeah. just looks like a long Okay, we're coming down to High Tower Gap, and on this sign, check that out. Brett. That's Brett's card. Brett. That's our shuttle guy. Eddie. So I think we're at the top of Sassafras Mountain. That was a bitch, huh? Oh. Hey. We decided to end today at Gerard Gap Road with about 14 miles and start at Cooper Gap. But we didn't realize the road, this road doesn't actually connect to the Appalachian Trails. Our wonderful shuttler. shuttler is going to show us a little secret way to get there within 0.2 miles of the trail. We're on day two of Georgia. And it was 20 degrees this morning as compared to nine yesterday. Total. Day 23 total. I think this is all newly created trail because this is all bench cut in like Imba and Nemba mountain bike standards. This is really nice. Like you could really be getting some flow. <laughs> we got a flow trail. George has really done a nice job on the AT. Awesome. Obviously it's brand new. Check this out. The technique here with the logs and the rocks here on the side. It's holding the bank in it. 
Okay, we're coming down to Gooch Gap. All these gaps are just road crossings. I didn't know what they were gonna be. And the Forest Service roads are fantastic. We easily could have driven our van up here. I didn't think so. But if the weather were bad, it'd be a different story. So I hate to keep talking about this, but it's pretty beautiful here. And the trail is amazing. It is. This is pretty. Just before we're dropping into Woody Gap. Here we are at Woody Gap. It's a paved road with lots There's of parking. Creature. And lots of hikers apparently. So you think this is the rock? <laughs> Maybe Creature's Rock? Okay, here we are at Gerard Gap. And now we're going to go down this road here to our car. 0.2 miles. After day two, we stayed at the hostel at Mountain Crossings, which is a store with a hostel down below, kind of in the basement of the left-hand side of the building. In the hostel, there are a bunch of bunk beds. Not that many, really, for when the bubble comes through. The caretaker told us not to bring food into the bunk area. So I, of course, ignored that and brought a pretty good-sized package of M&Ms in. And in the middle of the night, I started to hear this rustling, and I thought a new thru-hiker had come into the hostel late or something. But it turns out, when I looked down, my bag of M&Ms was gone, and a mouse was dragging them across the floor and had gotten about three bunks away from me but he didn't open them. So I went and grabbed them from the mouse and went out to the car and put them in the car. Came back and the mouse scurried out from underneath my sleeping bag because he was going after the cliff bars that I had left in the pockets of my pack. So if you go to mountain crossings, I don't know how you're going to secure your food, but the mice are after it. On day one in Georgia, I used my Hoka hiking boots and had no issues at all. On day two in Georgia, I used my brand new Ultra Lone Peaks and my I could feel a pinching on the inside of my right heel the entire hike. And I kind of ignored it. I got quite a blister. So I taped it up as best as I could and then went back to the Hokas for day three. But I really was in agony most of the way. So this is day three. We'll do a little update. We did not see the guy with the dungarees yesterday. We're calling him Dungaree Man. <laughs> dungarees. And we didn't see... Wait a minute. She, she, Beth told me that he had what gear to sleep he, out in? Oh, he had a bivy sack, he had a mountain hardware 25 degree bag, and a tent. Right? Tent. I think so. Sleeping bag. Oh, a hammock too. And a hammock. <laughs> So, he, he was he, covered all bases. He was loaded with equipment. So, we didn't see him. We were calling him Dungaree. We, did, we didn't we, see I don't, I don't know if we mentioned this, but we passed the guy with the dog who was starting this whole trail. And he had another big, large pack and a dog with a very large pack. We called him Orange because they were both, the dog had a bright orange rough wear pack and the guy was bright orange. So, and, and last night we were staying at the... Mountain Crossing Hostel, and this woman comes in and she starts talking to us and she's like Miss Positivity and Energetic and everything. And the guy that she was with said, do you know Miss Janet? At some point she said, do you know Miss Janet? And so I'm guessing at who she is because I heard of her and I didn't know where. So a little while later we're saying, well, we should exchange emails. And I said, what's your email address? And she says, the Miss Janet at da 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 dot com. And I'm like, oh my God, you're the Miss Janet. And so we <laughs> Holy took crap. pictures with her. We, we had a blast talking we, to her. We talked with her forever. It was awesome. And it was awesome. And, and, we're, and the other guy there is Splitter, who's like the caretaker at the hostel. Really nice guy. He's hiked the trail several times and runs it. That it was made our night. That was our trail magic. Yeah, that was cool. I never expected to have company in the hostel. Yeah. Um, we were the only two staying there. So we're back on the trail today. We're going to do Blood Mountain and get over to Pigpen. I mean, Hot, Hot Pen. Gap, where our car is. The trail has been awesome. People it don't has. know what they're missing. Uh, this is less awesome than most of it, but and it's steep. We're kind of climbing Blood Mountain. So what are you doing, Brad? So we're going to put some tape on top of the compete. Two. Never use new shoes on the trail. I don't know how people switch shoes. So I'm hoping tape that it. if I go yep. around the back side. See how that goes? I'll see how this goes. We're almost at the top. Okay, so this is Blood Mountain Shelter. This is what she meant by lots of little rocks. Yeah. 
No windows. Some tarps and tents in here. I guess we're at the top of Blood Mountain. Okay, turn around. That wasn't hard at all. Does this remind you of anything? Maine. <laughs> A little bit like Maine, only smoother. Oh, you're going off the big rock. Yep. Whee! Big rock. All right, Neil's Gap Mountain Crossings. Just coming in. I stopped twice to tape up my blister. I'm gonna go in the shop and see if I can find maybe a thin pair of socks or something. Well, we just spent a while inside and I got some socks to put on underneath my socks to see if my blister will get better. But there's a guy named Just Bill in there. He taught me how to tie my shoes. Taught me how to adjust my pack, told me it's too big for me. Everything, it's just awesome. Really nice guy. This is walking the AT through the CCC. Guess we go straight through here. The only place on the Appalachian Trail that goes like this. We're going through a building. Woohoo! Going down to it. Dasani. No dare, I guess. Man, hog pen is a bitch. My blister ended up getting worse on the third day and we ended up taking several days off and waited for the weather to get nice again before we continued the hike from Hogpen Gap.